Today we have a, a wetlands restoration project. In a physical sense, we're creating land, but in, a, in an emotional sense, we're protecting a community. Down the road in the, on the island of Ile de Jean Charles, we have a community of Native Americans that have lived there for about seven generations since the early 1800s. And this project is rebuilding land in an area that they have lived and fished from for their entire lives. And their, their culture is based on this land, and the land's eroding. And so the America's Wetland Foundation and its America's Wetland Conservation Corps approached Terrebonne Parish government and a few other partners to come together and put this project together with the CCA, Shell, and Entergy, and bring over over 300 volunteers down here to plant 187 floating islands. And the floating islands, uh, they're an experiment and a proven uh, method at the same time. We have, uh, in one phase of the project, we're putting these floating islands next to marshes, and they will act as a buffer and help to create land, support the existing marshes, and prevent them from further eroding. And in, in the other phase of the project, we're putting the floating islands in the middle of open water. And those islands, in theory, and we're going to test them and watch them for the next year and a half, will create land where there is no land against them to, to back up to. So uh, we're hoping that if we can create this land in open water, this project can be used in many, many instances across South Louisiana where there are pockets of open water where there used to be marshes. And if we put these islands, a year and a half later, we'll have land. The idea is that we're, we're creating floating islands and they are made from recycled PET plastic um, so essentially it's the water bottles that we drink from every day, water, Sprite, 7-Up bottles, and it's, it's recycled into a matrix sheet. And what we do is we assemble this matrix sheet into a floating island. And we use a marine foam which adheres the layers of matrix together and also adds buoyancy so that that's what enables the island to float. Um, we also drill holes on top and that's what all of the volunteers that are here today are doing. They are helping us to plant them. And we're using two uh, native saltwater plants, um, seashore paspalum and smooth gourd. And where are the plants grown and how mature are they when they're brought in for the transplant? We got the plants from uh, a local grower, uh, Aaron Pierce, who's here in Montague. Um, and he pulled them uh, out of the ground two days ago. So, and he's also trimmed them back, um, which, which he's been telling us is it will enable the roots uh, will, will enable the plant to focus on the roots by trimming them and to help them establish themselves a lo little better in the island and then focus on seeding maybe in a month. What kind of success have you had so far? Um, we've used the, prod the product for coastal restoration work in a, in a couple of projects in Lafouche Parish and also, as well um, in Bayou Sauvage Refuge um, in New Orleans. And they're working great. In Lafouche, they're protecting levees and um, the, the, you can hardly even see the matrix any longer. It's, it's completely covered with vegetation. Um, Wendell Kierall has told us it's working exactly how he wanted it to work. And in Bayou Sauvage, we're actually seeing plants jump off of the island and start to grow off of the island. So that's one of the goals for this project. Um, one goal is, is just to protect the marsh that is there. We're putting islands in front of marsh. But the second goal is to um, see if sediment will drop. Because you can imagine the plants will grow through the mat and you'll have this long, uh, large root mass hanging in the water, which will enable sediment to drop down. Once we can get sediment buildup, the seeds off of the original plants that we're planting will fall into the water. And as long as there's something for those seeds to grow in, they can grow as well. And that's what we've seen in Bayou Sauvage. What holds the islands in place and keeps them from floating away? So what we use is an earth anchor. It's a, it's a stainless steel anchor head. And for this project, we're driving the anchors into until we hit clay, which is about 15 to 18 feet. So that'll vary project to project. But here, these, these anchors are um, anywhere from 15 to 18 feet deep, and they are in, in clay. What's your reaction to everything you've seen here today? I think it's great. Um, this is a three-day project, and we will have over 300 volunteers help us to, to protect what, what we're losing, which is important to all of us that live here. Today we're doing a project that we've been in the making for about two years. We're trying to do some land restoration over here by using these floating islands. We looked at this project, uh, for, uh, like I said, about two years. The product has been around for about that same amount of time. And we decided that what we would do is try to do a experimental type use of this product. The reason we're doing it at this particular location is that 
We are doing probably $100 million worth of uh, coastal restoration in this parish, Terrebonne Parish, but it's all done in areas that are not available to the average person unless you own a boat or an airplane to fly over it. Here you'll be able to drive to the, to the project and we'll be able to watch it work uh, and do its thing. Another reason we're doing it here, it is the, the, the only lifeline that people have that live on this island, this Elonshaw Island, was Native Americans, about 60 families live there. And they actually, we call it island, it's in French, the Elon Charles, in English it's called Island of Jean Charles. And when they actually settled there about 150 years ago, it actually was an island, an island in the middle of the marsh. Today it's become a, the real normal, it's an island. It's surrounded by water on 360 degrees around it. So we're trying to reverse that, that, that product so they don't have to leave the ancestral ground because they're flooding every year worse and worse and we're trying to prevent that. Tell us about the, your family roots. Family roots, well I guess uh, Nakans, Dardar, Chassons uh, came here back in 1840, which was uh, I guess cousins and all, they all came here and, and, and you know, and started off the, the island uh, with those three uh, family names, uh, which was his Nakan, Chassons, and, uh, and Dardar. Uh, and, uh, and we've been growing there since uh, 1840. I was a manager for one Dixie's uh, supermarket, and with uh, when the tide would come up, I couldn't go to work. So my supervisor gave me a choice: either move, where well, you can come to work every day, or find something else. You know. So with a wife and a child, I had no choice, so I moved. If it wouldn't be for that, I'd, I'd still be here. Cause it, 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 talk about paradise. This is paradise. You don't remember the Depression. But you know, for the depression, you know, a lot of people suffered. The island people didn't suffer because we were living off the land. We had our, our fishing, our hunting, and and basically, well, I guess we did trapping a little bit for money. But basically, the people didn't need any money. We lived, we lived off the land, and uh, today, living off the land is almost impossible. So from uh, back when I was a, a kid, or even my, my parents and his parents, you know, when everybody lived off the land. Uh, up to today, well, there's a, a great big difference. They're different because they lived off the land, and uh, basically now it's almost impossible to live off the land because because we need money. So just just to eat, we could we could, but you know, if you want to 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 drive a car or be in air condition, all that, you need to make money to to pay for your utilities and so yeah, there's a big difference between living off the land and also. Uh, uh, well, from from today, you know, today we we, we got to we got to get an education to go to work. But back then, there was no need for education because we lived off the land. How has the coastal erosion changed life on the island for you and uh, your families? Well, coastal e erosion forced me to to, to get out. If uh, they don't save the coast, everybody's gonna be moving north of I-10. You know, and like I said, it's uh, the way it's eroding here because. Like right here, if, if you look, I don't know if your camera will catch it, but you see like, it, like that marsh is over there, way on the end, in the middle? That's the way it used to be all along here. This side was the same thing. And with the erosion, you can see what they got left. This is, this is all gone. Uh, we used to duck hunt up in here. We didn't need blinds. Now, it's all open water. So you, it, it's gone, you know. It's, It'd be hard to bring it back. Feel that uh, this uh, coastal restoration project will help preserve the culture? Uh, it sure it, it, it will. In the, in, in the you know the effort that it will do is to help preserve the land and, and keep people here. And not only that, it shows the people a willingness by other people that we're all worth saving. And if we're worth saving, then that will transfer to other communities along the coastline. That in the event you know it, it's happening all over. So if it if it flourishes and makes it here we should be able to expand it into other communities and, and save their community also. This is uh, ground zero of coastal, coastal erosion in Terrebonne Parish. Uh, we have, it's been a real plight with the natives of uh, Ile de Jean Charles and this road connects them and this is their lifeline to that island that is hanging on by a thread at this time. Anything we can do to protect this road and protect our area is essential for our area. What's your reaction to the floating islands? I love the concept. They can actually plant underneath a tent. We can put it out. We can connect them. It does a great amount of assistance in trying to maybe accumulate some additional 
uh, buildup of our wetlands adjacent to areas that we need to protect, and it's just a great concept. This area has been severely impacted by coastal erosion and subsidence. We're losing our natural habitat, and we're hoping this floating island technique will actually build new land so that we could have more interface between the shoreline areas and the water areas so the fish can have their breeding areas, kind of recreating the natural estuary that's already here. But this new technique is offering a lot of promise because we're actually creating new land. We're not having to, to pump and dredge and, and put up a lot of soil and then start. We're going out on open water with this project. So CCA Louisiana is very proud to be a major sponsor of this effort. Are you? What's your reaction to everything that you've seen here today? This is fantastic to have the local involvement here. We have the Native American community here represented very well. We have the school groups here. Great to have the young kids out here and get them interested in conservation at, a, at an early age. We're very, very proud of this effort. We have a lot of youth outreach through our organization, and this is certainly contributing towards it. This is a, a native reservation. The Homa Indians is what Homa is named after. And you've got this, this area, which is pointish end, which means point of the oaks. And you've got all this devastation from saltwater intrusion. And now you've got folks out here trying to replenish the marsh to build those oaks back up. Today, we started building land for Louisiana, and we kind of got a couple of the girls dirty. What did you learn by doing it? We learned that Louisiana is losing land every single day, and if we don't help build it, then eventually there won't be any more Louisiana and no duck hunting. What do you think of the floating island concept? It's actually pretty cool how eventually all this will turn into land that the plants and animals can just grow, and I think that's pretty cool. What was your job here today? Building land for Louisiana because of the coastal erosion. Was it easier or harder than you thought? Kind of both. I wasn't expecting to get all money, but I'm glad I got money because I'm building land. Why is it important that we save the coast? If we don't, then Louisiana's not going to be there anymore. Today we put plants in plastic things and we're going to try to build, rebuild the marshland. What did you learn by doing it? That many of Louisiana is lo losing almost every day of its land and that it's very important to keep that habitat going for many of the animals. We're building little bitty islands to put in the water to help save the erosion from the island. I learned that we can save the ecosystem in the wetlands. It's pretty exciting, especially today. We have every generation represented here. We have corporate, we have NGOs, we have the government. We also have the Native American people that live on this land. We have children from the local elementary schools and older uh, members of South Louisiana from the corporate sector here volunteering with them. So we truly have the people of all sectors who rely on this land and work on South Louisiana's coast here helping to rebuild it. And so to watch that happen and to see a new technology be employed, one layer of a multiple line of offense strategy that Louisiana is beginning to adopt from the top bottom, uh, it's exciting to see that we're going to teach children, the youth of Louisiana, why they need to do this and why this is important. And at the same time, we can have the corporate partners who make their money and their profit off of the land of South Louisiana um, here also putting back their energy and their time to rebuilding and making sure that the coast is here for future generations. If people have questions or like more information, what should they do? Uh, for more information on this project, they can visit americaswetland.org and on that website they'll find ways where they can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, our e-newsletters. They can also donate and become a member to America's Wetland Foundation and then they can sign up to be a volunteer for the America's Wetland Conservation Corps and come with us on future plantings and help rebuild, get our hands dirty, and be a part of rebuilding Louisiana's coast.